Hello, Tab Nation. It's Tom. And today, we're going to be talking about GUIs. I haven't done a GUI video in a while, and I quite enjoy GUIs. I know a lot of people don't know how to do them, so I enjoy teaching them also. And yes, I know I say GUI. A lot of people do say that. I know it stands for GUI, Graphical User Interface. I do get comments where people like harass me for saying GUI. But you know what? I like saying it that way. I like the simple ways. <laughs> but to each his own. Alright, so in this one we're going to be talking about how to click multiple buttons within a GUI before an action is taking place. I've seen this asked a few times. I've never personally had to ever have the need for this. Uh, but I figured we would do something kind of like, let's say you're in a restaurant and you're working on an order. You know, you click the soda button. Okay, that's been done. You click the hot dog button. That's been done. Now let's click the fries button. That's been done. Oh, all three buttons have been pressed now. Complete order. So something like that. You'll see it in action after I go through the code and kind of explain how I made this work. So yeah, let's take a look at the code, shall we? Global button equals in. <clears throat> I just put in for like not complete. Um, you can be, you know, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, we do need to make them global because they're going to be called later on. And without the word, if we don't make them global, this is always going to show up as blank. So we don't need that. So just make sure that you're putting global for any type of uh, buttons that you need to be multi-pressed in order to complete an action. We're going to press F1 for our GUI to be created. And I've done videos on showing you how to create a GUI. I made this one real fast in like, I don't know, 20 seconds within Smart GUI Creator. I believe that was my first GUI video I ever did. So if you want to see the easiest way to ever create a GUI, definitely check that one out. It's on my GUI playlist on my channel. <clears throat> so I'm not really going to run through this. You'll see what this actually looks like. Um, but I don't need to really explain what a GUI is if you're this far into my tutorials. Uh, so here, the only thing I added is for hot dog, G, which means go to hot dog. So we're basically jumping to this handler, which is just right here. And it's the same for all three. Uh, we do have some text boxes, which obviously you'll understand a little bit better. We do have a variable there. We do need that for our GUI control. I'll explain that in a second. So I'm doing V for variable. Hot dog, capital R, just means ready. And same with fries and soda. And then I just named my window orders. So I'm not really going to break that down much more than that. So when I click that hot dog button, meaning I just finished creating a hot dog for the client, I'm going to jump here. I'm going to do GUI control. And that basically means make a change within my GUI. So what are we doing? Well, we want to change that variable hot dog R like we saw up here. As you see, there's no text here. Ready. That's going to add the text ready there. So instead of being blank, it'll now say ready. We then want to say button equals P for pressed. I guess up here actually I meant not pressed or something like that. I really don't remember. <laughs> but hey, it can be whatever. Um, that way we know that button has been pressed. That way later on we can make a check. And that's actually what we're going to do now. So we're going to call upon this function. See what pressed. I guess I could have worded that a little bit better. And we just got our little enclosed things here. That's just saying, um, or parentheses, or parentheses, yeah. Uh, that's basically saying, go to this function. Uh, fries, same thing. All I did was change, you know, button two, the variable that I'm doing, still using the word ready, also calling, exact same thing for soda. So here is our function right here. And this is what's really, every time we press a button, it's seen, have the other ones been pressed? So, if button 1 equals button 2, and and symbol, button 2 equals button 3, that's basically saying, do all three of those buttons equal the same thing? So, you know, it's going to say, does button 1 equal P? Uh, or button 1 and button 2, do they both equal P? Okay, that means 1 and 2 at least match. Well, now let's also check button 2 and 3. So you're kind of doing like an overlay there. You know, makes it less work. It's, it's a lot less ifs you have to use. You can do everything in one line. 
um, just make sure you're overlapping. So if I were to have more buttons, the next one would need to start with button three equals button four, button four equals button five, or whatever you call them and so on. That way we can just do everything in one line versus creating a whole bunch of nested ifs. It just looks better and it's easier. Quote or inside where if so, if they do all equal P, if not, it's just going to return and it's going to wait for you to press another button. I forgot to mention that. But if they do all equal P, everything's been pressed, we are going to get a message box saying that the order is done. Obviously, you know, you'd probably have it doing something else besides message box order done. You know, whatever you're using, you'd probably just, you'd just put your code here of whatever actions are supposed to be completed. You know, if it's opening Chrome and then sending some text or something like that. Um, but we're just going to use the message box for this video. Can't be simple. So now we want to restart everything. So we're just going to clear out basically all those buttons there. And we're going to get rid of all those words ready and just replace them with blank with nothing. We're going to erase the word ready on everything. One thing I did want to add, actually, it's always kind of good to have this if you're going to be reusing a GUI over and over again as a GUI destroy at the beginning. That kind of helps a little bit. Uh, so you don't run into some duplicate error kind of situation with a variable. So yeah, that, I mean, this was actually pretty simple, but it gives you a lot of flexibility in GUIs. That's what's so beautiful about this. So let's go ahead and see that in action. So multibutton.ahk is what I called it, just so I can find it. And if you guys like these kind of videos, want to learn some more, maybe automation, not just necessarily in auto hockeys, I do branch out because I hope that eventually you guys want to branch out. So I do a lot of intro videos on like JavaScript, that kind of stuff, just to kind of give you an intro into automating with something else. All right, we're going to press our hotkey F1. All right, you know, I'm an employee, I'm working, maybe this GUI's on a touch screen. I'm going to push, uh, let's say I finish the fries. Fries are done. All right, click. There's that GUI control saying ready. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this guy just finished the hot dog. All right, that's ready. And, you know, okay, on the way out to give the customer his uh, food bag, I quickly make the soda on the way. Okay, that's done. Boom, order done. There's our little message box or where your code would run. We're going to say OK, and as you see, everything just kind of reset there. And then, you know, we can just do stuff in different orders. It doesn't really matter. If I close this out, open it again with F1, you know, start over, that kind of stuff. So lots of flexibility there. I really enjoyed making this uh, just because it was so easy, but can give you so much powerful, like, manipulation with how your script's going to actually run. All right, if you guys have any questions on this video or any ideas on maybe some other kind of way you want to see a GUI interact with the person or the script, definitely let me know in the comments below. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.